And let me see. We've got several great questions for you, Dr. Sadaka. I'll start with why would a producer group select gasification over other better known alternatives considering the challenges that you discussed? Thank you for the question. I will think about considering the, the gasification as, as a process because one, all, uh, all other alternatives like anaerobic digestion or composting are well-proven technologies, but we need to consider the infrastructure for a large digester. And also what we found during the, the number of years of experience that it needs engineering management. I like to utilize the term engineering management because any other wrong management of a digester will affect the quality of the, of the digester to some extent that maybe totally stop or, or inhibit the bacteria, uh, the, the bacteria activation within the system itself. These are, these are the, some of the challenges we, we can have with some uh, with anaerobic digestion, uh, such as uh, the cost and um, the maintenance. In addition to that, if I have my, my initial feedstock comes in a lower moisture content, rather than adding more water to make it in slurry form that bacteria love, I will have it as a dry material which can go, back, go directly to the gasifier. So within, with, even though with, we have some challenges in the gasification process, but we still can, can, can make it uh, more accessible to feedstock. I have to mention that several years ago, I was very excited to, to listen to a presentation maybe about 18 or 19 years ago that someone was, was drawing a line in the United States the line go from left to right and say, digesters can work all year round in the southern states due to the, the weather condition. Digesters will work in the, in the northern states all year round if I provide enough heat to maintain the, the energy in the digester, especially during the, the winter time. So it will add to the cost of running the digester. All right, we've got a, another question for you, Dr. Sadaka. Sure, yes. uh, the next one is, is this system being used on farms or is it still a research demo model? And what are the cost-benefit analyses? That's, that's a great question. Thank you for the question. It's, this process is still in the research proven stage that we still uh, we're still trying to improve the quality we we run it first time without the second stage which I'm working with my PhD student on the on, on checking the, the visibility of this stage and as an uh, as an engineer I'm not going to to fast say that it will work it will work on the farm and it can be scaled up but to my knowledge Whenever we have auger system, and the auger system can can provide the, the uh, enough or uh, the reasonable feed rate, and I have uh, external heat enough to uh, convert the material to gas, I don't see any restriction that this system can be scaled up, and the quality of the gas can be enhanced. To to tell you uh, to answer the second part of the question, we did not do any. Uh, economical visibility yet, but that's our second stage once we prove that the technology is working and the quality of the gas will, will be uh, high enough that we can utilize this system. All right, we had another question that I uh, wanted you to elaborate on the fate of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium within the manure. Uh, that goes through the gasification process, and they wanted to know, is it all in the char, or what happens to it? Okay. For, for nitrogen, I have two sources of nitrogen introduced to the system now. One comes from, from uh, manure, and the second one comes from the air. If 
I work under combustion uh, temperatures, which is very high temperature, I'm expecting nitrogen as N2, and also I can some, sometimes expect nitrogen oxide uh, because of the high temperature. And in, in gasification case, most of the researchers mentioned that because of the lower temperature as compared to the combustion temperature, the, the nitrogen oxide, I'm not going to say will be eliminated totally, but at least minimized because you did not r lift, rise the temperature up to produce them. So nitrogen in, in this case will be maybe in the form of nitrogen as, as a gas, or some of them can be in the form of, uh, of ammonia, which my experience and one of the previous uh, experiments we did several years ago, that once I produce, start the system producing biochar, biochar somehow reduce the amount of, of ammonia coming out of the system. In, in one of the experiments we find that almost when we start gasifying switchgrass, we started with close to 7,000 parts per million, and when we end the, the run, the run after 16 hours, run maybe we we'll, we'll reduce this maybe to less than 25% of this amount. First of all, that's my, my goal and my hope. I didn't uh, explore yet if I, if I get it in the biochar or it will come out of any other forms, but my goal, my hope is that it will be condensed in the biochar. So instead of, of having uh, the animal manure itself, it will be in, condensed in the biochar, which represent 5 or 10 percent of the initial feedstock. All right. And we've got one more question. <clears throat> it wanted to know what is the difference between bio drying and composting? Oh. The, the bio drying is a, is a process very similar to composting, except I need to heat up the material faster, and I need to maintain the temperature as long as I can for several days, that this temperature will help me drive off the moisture. So instead of using high flow rate of air in composting, I'm using lower flow rate of air. Not to the extent that it will be zero, so it will convert to anaerobic. No, but I'm introducing lower amount of air flow rate that it will it will maintain the microorganism active, the aerobic microorganism will be active, so they start digesting some of the material. Certainly I'm losing some of the volatile matter, but because of the, the high temperature, the 65 degree temperature, even though it was outside temperature minus 15, when I was doing this, this work in Ames, Iowa, the minus, the minus 15 work, minus 15 degree temperature outside did not affect the pile temperature. The, the pile still can evaporate the steam. In composting, my goal is to produce material that odorless and can back, go, go back, passenger free can, can be incorporated back again to the soil. In bio drying, my goal is to produce material that I can take it to a gasification process or pyrolysis process or combustion process with further drying of the, uh, of the moisture. Thank you. Uh, we have another question sure. that wants you to elaborate a bit more on what the uh, net energy yields are as, as far as the, the gas and BTU is concerned. Okay, that, that's a great question. We are, we, what we have now is we start, start installing meters for every single step in, in this gasifier, in this system that we will, we will measure the energy required to drive the motors, the energy required to heat the system, and also the energy content in the gas, the producer gas, because certainly the gas contains some sensible heat and contains some BTU, the biochar BTU and the, the tar BTU if we succeed to get it. So we will be monitoring the, the energy in this system and my goal in the next step, which will be in the coming years, is to recycle 
sum of the gas back again to the system. So if I start my system by external heat, I like eventually to recycle some, a portion of the gas back again to the system, and this will provide some of the heat, or the required heat, to maintain the system, what we call it in, in, in thermochemical conversion term, a self-sustained system. So self-sustained means that I initiate the reaction and then recycle back again a portion of the gas, then the system will be self-sustained for longer time. So just, just to make sure that I'm, I'm clear with what I said, that we did not account for every single 